You know, there's been a whole lot of talk lately about the state of streaming TV, with some people saying streaming is now worse than cable. I don't know about that, but there are five ways that streaming TV is changing for the worse. Let's get into it. Number one is advertising. And when I ask my YouTube community about their biggest frustration with streaming TV, a lot of people said the same thing, the ads. Trust me, I get it. Some of you started streaming in the first place just to get away from ads. Now, nearly every major streaming service has a plan with advertising. And that includes Netflix, which launched ads in 2022. But to be fair, I'm always trying to, Netflix and others still offer ad-free plans. So if there's a plan with ads and a plan without ads, why are people so frustrated about the advertising? Isn't more choice a good thing? Well, it's more complicated than that because the people I hear from aren't just upset over the ads. They're also frustrated about the pricing of the ad-free plans, which just keep going up. And unfortunately, I don't see this slowing down anytime soon. Ads are just too good for business. During investor calls, I've noticed that the streaming executives are quick to point out the success of the plans with advertising. In some cases, ad-supported plans deliver a higher ARPU, average revenue per user. So if a user downgrades from Netflix's standard plan to the standard plan with advertising, it's actually not a downgrade for Netflix. Netflix makes more money from that standard plan with ads. And because of these dynamics, we're seeing more frequent and more severe price increases for those plans that do not have advertising. But fortunately, at least for now, ad-free options still exist. Having worked in the TV industry for a decade myself, streaming TV's march toward advertising really hasn't come as a surprise to me. In fact, it's been quite predictable. Legacy media companies like Disney, NBC Universal, Paramount, and Warner Brothers Discovery, well, they've always been heavily reliant on advertising. Combined, these companies own dozens of broadcast and cable TV networks. And what do these networks all have in common? You guessed it, lots and lots of ads. But as people have cut the cable TV cord and switched to streaming, Legacy media companies have created new places to sell all their ads. And that's where services like Disney+, Plus, Peacock, Paramount+, Plus, and Max come into play. Ads on streaming services are definitely getting worse. That's a fact. But I struggle when people say that it's getting worse than broadcast or cable TV. Sure, we've got ads in more places, like on my remote for these streaming services, and another ad when I turn on the TV and access the home screen, and of course, the ads within the content. But have you actually watched a show on broadcast or cable TV lately? This is an episode of Friends that I watched on Max's ad-supported plan. The length of the episode, 22 minutes long, standard for a broadcast TV show that airs in a 30-minute time slot. But when I streamed this episode from Max, there weren't eight minutes of advertising like on broadcast or cable TV, two minutes of ads for the entire show. That's it. I've tested the ad-supported plans for both Max and Netflix. They've got about four minutes of ads per hour, sometimes less. So that's not just half the ads of regular TV, it's a quarter of the ads. Prime Video recently introduced ads. Subscribers can expect up to three and a half minutes of ads per hour. And for my testing, Hulu and Paramount Plus are some of the more frustrating services to watch. Expect about eight to 10 minutes of ads per hour, in some cases, it's been a little bit more. So over the next year, what I'm watching is to see whether there's an increase in the ad load for the services that have fewer ads. So right now, that would be Prime Video, Max, and Netflix. And when it comes to advertising on your home screen, like this ad here on Roku, I've read reports that more ads are on the way. Personally, I'm able to tune ads like these out, but do they bother you? Let me know down below in the comments. Let's keep it moving, and number two today is password crackdowns. Netflix put an end to password sharing starting in May 2023, and it worked really well for them. The service was immediately rewarded with millions of new paid subscribers. And many of those new subs, well, they signed up for that plan with ads, the one that's more profitable for Netflix. Now, other services like Hulu and Max, well, they're following Netflix's lead, and they've got their own password sharing bans in the works. So far today, we've talked about more ads, limits on sharing, and now there's number three, the 4K surcharge. I'm gonna use YouTube TV for this example. The live TV service, basically cable 2.0, offers only limited content and 4K picture quality 
across the networks that it carries. Now you might assume that would be included in the $73 a month base plan. It's not. No, you need the 4K Plus add-on for that. $5 a month for the first year, $10 a month after that. YouTube TV is not alone though. Streaming services like Netflix and Max are also making us pay more for 4K picture quality, something that a whole lot of streamers feel should be standard in 2024. Number four today is content, and I'm not here to say that content on the streaming platforms is worse than cable TV, because I don't believe that. There's a lot of great content to stream. You really only need a few seconds of scrolling through the live guide for a service with cable channels to see how bad that's gotten. These days, many cable networks offer very little content that is new and original. One of my favorite things about streaming is that you can watch all that great content on your own schedule. So back in the 90s, if you weren't home Thursdays at 8 o'clock to watch Friends, you might have to wait for a rerun. Streaming solved that issue, making shows and movies available on demand. But that doesn't mean there haven't been growing pains. There have, and those growing pains have made me nostalgic for the way that it used to be. I've got three issues I'm going to talk about in this section. First, finding shows has gotten just too complicated. And this is the result of having just way too many streaming services. There, I said it. Too many services. I'll stick with Friends as the example. When this show originally aired and someone asked you about the latest episode, you probably wouldn't respond, what network is it on? Everyone knew it was on NBC, so you could just talk about the show and what happened. But those days, they're over. Now, when someone asks me about a show, I'm lucky if I've heard of it, know where I can watch it, and actually subscribe to the service that it's on. The second issue with content is that it can be pretty hard to find out when new episodes or new seasons are actually going to drop. Netflix is known for its binge release strategy, but some of its competitors now release new episodes on a weekly basis. That's really not a problem for me. I've gotten used to it both ways by now, but it can be frustrating to finish watching a season of episodes and not know when the next season will premiere, or even if that show that ended on a cliffhanger is coming back at all. It's just very unpredictable compared to the TV that we're used to, when shows would premiere in the fall and wrap in the spring. Now, you really have to track your favorite shows and do research to keep up with when they're coming back. And third, shorter seasons. When you look at older shows like Friends, they typically had a couple dozen episodes per season. But now, you're lucky if you get 10 episodes in a season. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate the high quality of the shows on streaming platforms, and I do think the quality of the shows is still very good. But if subscribers are left waiting a year or even more for new episodes, you can see how only 8 or 10 episodes may leave some people feeling a little bit let down. This video wouldn't be complete without a section dedicated entirely to price. And believe it or not, I hear from people all the time who say streaming is now more expensive than cable. And I guess that's possible if you've got a live TV streaming service like YouTube TV, and you also subscribe to all the major streaming services. But most people I know don't subscribe to all these plans in a single month, and the trend has actually been cutting back on services. So far, the sharpest price increases have affected people who pay for the cable 2.0 services, the ones like YouTube TV. It launched at $35 a month, now the price has more than doubled. YouTube TV and its competitors are in the business of offering broadcast and cable TV networks, more than 100 in YouTube TV's base plan. But the subscription price has largely gone up because of sports. YouTube TV is a pay TV bundle, just like cable and just like satellite. The difference is it's delivered over the internet. And these bundles are all about the illusion of value. Of those 100 networks in the base plan, the overwhelming majority of your bill is going to local stations and sports networks. There's an upcoming sports streaming service that proves this point. Slated to launch in the fall, the service will include the ESPN Plus streaming service, as well as these 14 linear networks that carry sports. No official price at recording time, but it's expected to cost $40 to $50 a month. That's a steep price for 14 networks, and compare that to the live TV streaming service Friendly TV. It offers more than 40 networks, less than $10 a month. The difference is, no sports and no locals, Friendly TV focuses on entertainment. 
So you can really see where your money is going with the pay TV bundle. It's going to sports. And one thing that I've noticed, the on-demand services, they're now starting to include more sports and live events in their plans. The best example of this is probably Prime Video adding NFL's Thursday Night Football. And in a recent video, I told you that Prime Video has now won the rights to an exclusive NFL wildcard playoff game next season. So that's similar to what Peacock had this past season. So if this trend continues and more live sports and events leaves linear TV going to those on-demand streaming services, well, that could lead to price increases for the on-demand services. And ultimately, subscribers are going to be paying for those sports rights, whether they watch that sports content or not. For now, I'm doing what I can to save money, limiting my paid subscriptions, rotating them throughout the year, and taking advantage of the best deals as they happen. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about everything I covered in today's video and anything that I missed. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.